Hello, I'm Jim Powell, speaking about my efforts to determine the strength of the consensus on man-made global warming. In my opinion, the only sound method is to search the peer-reviewed literature for articles that clearly reject the theory. My most recent search covered 2013 and 2014. I found 24,210 articles by 69,406 authors. Only five articles rejected man-made global warming. Two were by the same author, so the proportion of rejecting articles is 1 in 17,352, or 0.006%. As I will explain, this means that 99.99% of publishing climate scientists accept man-made global warming. That is as close to unanimous as it gets in science. The five rejecting articles have been cited a grand total of once. But wait a minute, isn't the consensus supposed to be 97%? That is what everyone from President Obama on down has come to believe. If it were 97%, then one in 33 peer-reviewed articles would reject man-made global warming. If you read a couple of issues of any climate journal, you would find one or two rejecting articles. Instead, to find even one, you have to read nearly 5,000. The consensus cannot possibly be as low as 97%. Where then does the 97% come from? Primarily from a 2013 article by Cook et al. Their starting assumption was that publishing scientists who accept man-made global warming will say so. They will, in, quote, endorse, end quote, the theory by, quote, addressing or mentioning human activities as the cause, end quote. But consensus means agreement, not just stated agreement. Far more scientists accept the theory than may happen to say so in their articles. As evidence, I reviewed hundreds of articles on plate tectonics, evolution, and the origin of lunar craters by meteorite impact. I reviewed articles on global warming in Environmental Research Letters, the journal in which Cook et al. published. Without exception, not one of the authors of these many articles either directly endorsed or rejected the theory in question. In these cases, the Cook et al. method would lead to dividing zero by zero. Thus, the Cook et al. starting assumption is demonstrably false. Authors almost never endorse the ruling paradigm of their discipline. It lies in the background of all they do without the need to say so. But those who have evidence against a theory will say so. That is how science progresses and how scientific reputations are made. This means that we can confidently infer the percentage who accept from the percentage who reject. Since I found that 0.006% reject man-made global warming, I infer that the percentage who accept, the consensus, is 99.99%. The Cook et al. search found 11,944 articles. They threw out nearly 8,000 because they neither endorsed nor rejected man-made global warming. They labeled those articles as taking, quote, no position, end quote. But the consensus is what the majority accept. You cannot throw out a two-thirds majority and still derive the consensus. If you do, you are bound to get the wrong answer. Again, because an author appears to take no position does not mean that the author has none. Look at it this way. If two-thirds of authors truly have no position, then man-made global warming cannot be the consensus. Conversely, if man-made global warming is the consensus, then it follows that the majority of the authors of those nearly 8,000 articles accept the theory, but do not say so. But that violates the Cook et al. starting assumption. Thus, either there is no consensus or the Cook et al. method is false. 
Cook et al. rated only 64 articles, 0.5%, as explicitly states that humans are the primary cause of recent global warming. But if only 0.5% of authors explicitly endorse this standard definition of man-made global warming, and if endorsement is the criterion, then it cannot be the consensus. Why do those 64 articles appear to endorse man-made global warming? About half are about the causes of global warming. Naturally, those authors said something about causes. These are not endorsements, but scientific conclusions. The other half are about the impacts of global warming and how to mitigate them. Again, these are not endorsements, but statements that authors made to set the stage for their article or to make a point. To sum up, the true consensus on man-made global warming among publishing climate scientists is barely distinguishable from unanimity. Thus, science has spoken, and with one voice. We can heed the warning, or we can let ignorance and ideology trump reason and science, and destroy our grandchildren's future. Thank you for watching.